Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for coming uh, to, to this uh, panel about uh, trans histories and archives. It's such a pleasure to have our guests today um, from uh, far, far away places too. Uh, and, uh, and I'm really happy and excited about it. Um, I'll just start acknowledging that I'm in Jojake, Montreal, on the unceded indigenous lands of the Ganyangahaga Mohawk Nation. Jojake is historically known as a gathering, gathering place for many First Nations, and we recognize the Ganyangahaga as custodians of the lands and waters from where I speak today. In this uh, 10 years of the uh, Vancouver Art Book Fair, uh, we decided to reflect a bit on the past with the histories team. So we'll be uh, talking in the program about histories, memories, stories, uh, and with artists and practices that deal with the past, with preservation, reenactment, retelling, recovery, and especially of those histories that have been erased or marginalized. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'd like to thank uh, the book fair team for putting together this event. This is, uh, has been a, like a, a, a huge effort and, uh, and it's very successful, I think. Uh, uh, I'll just do a brief intro uh, of our guests today. Um, and, and then uh, each of them are going to speak a little bit. We have a conversation. And at the end, there's going to be a QA and a with, with the public. You can start to drop in questions in the chat, in the book fair website, uh, before the end of the conversation, whenever you feel like asking a question. And then the questions are going to be uh, delivered to our, our room here, uh, where the guests can then answer. Uh, this panel is a conversation about the role of uh, uh, registering and documenting the histories of trans folk. The founder of uh, Arquivo de la Memoria Trans in Argentine, Argentina, uh, and Veronica Fierce of Chaco Editorial, who is the publisher of the book Book Arquivo de la Memoria Trans, and also Dr. Aaron Dever, Chair of uh, Transgender Studies and Archives at the University of Victoria, uh, will join us in a discussion about the practices and politics surrounding queer archiving and trans, trans archiving in particular. Uh, the transgender archives at the University of Victoria was founded in 2011 by Aaron Dever uh, and it preserves and safe, safeguards the history of pioneering trans uh, activists and community leaders and researchers who have contributed to the betterment of trans people. Their records on research go back to the 19th century, while their records on activism by trans people started in 1960 and are in 15 languages from 23 countries on all continents except Antarctica. Uh, their collections comprise the largest trans archives in the world. Our endeavor has been studying and teaching transgender topics since the early 1980s. Uh, he established and holds the world's first chair in transgender studies, uh, initiated and hosts the International Interdisciplinary Moving Trans History Forward Conferences and founded and serves as subject matter expert for the world's largest transgender archives. Um, and uh, Chaco, uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, Archivo Trans project began with uh, Claudia Pia Baudraco and Maria Belen Correa, two activists who were instrumental in creating Argentina's first trans organization, the ATA, and passing the country's first trans rights bill, the gender identity law. Pia and Maria Belen always imagined having a space to reunite surviving compañeras and their memories. After Pia died in 2012, Maria Belen started the archive from a box of Pia's old photos. In 2014, with the help of photographer Cecilia Stales, they began collecting and digitally preserving Pia's photographs and others from the trans community. Six years later, the archive houses a collection of more than 10,000 documents with material dating back to the early 20th century and up until late 
Chaco Editorial was created in 2015 by Veronica Fieras and is an independent space for alternative and experimental approaches to publishing, understanding book making as a creative journey to walk alongside the author and reinterpreting and adapting this work into a new expressive medium. Thanks so much for coming. Very nice to meet you. Encantada, uh, Belém. Encantada, Veronica, de conocer ustedes. And uh, let's start then with uh, Dr. Aaron, I think Dr. Aaron is going to introduce us and talk a little bit about the trans archives. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. I'm really pleased to be able to be part of uh, this event today and on this panel with uh, a great group of, of people. So um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the uh, transgender archives uh, and I'm going to use a PowerPoint to um, to do that. So uh, you can see this I think now so this is just my um, opening screen. Move that out of the way. Okay, so uh, we're preserving uh, trans plus history. I use trans plus to indicate that there's many, many people who um, use many different ways to describe themselves, not necessarily all choosing trans. So uh, that's my shorthand for uh, trying to recognize everybody. Um, I'm speaking to you from Victoria, British Columbia on the west coast of uh, the nation of Canada. This is the traditional territory of the Wakongan people. Uh, Wakongan speaking people. These are the Songhees, Esquimalt, and the Saanich people. So I appreciate being on their uh, traditional lands today. Uh, we're now reaching the 10th anniversary of the Transgender Archives. We started uh, collecting material uh, in 2007, uh, but we actually opened the Transgender Archives and launched in the uh, fall of uh, 2011. So we're just right on our 10 year anniversary. The building you see there is the library at the University of Victoria and the archives are on the, the, the lowest floor in the corner, right, right about where that big round circle is. Uh, the pictures at the bottom give you a view of the entrance to the, the reading room of the transgender archives, a few items uh, that we uh, have out on a table for display and just another view of where the reading room is. We share this space with a dozen other archives, uh, all of which are stored in this library. And uh, this is the comfortable space that you can come to if you would like to uh, put your hands on the history that we have. Uh, so part of what guides us is uh, thoughts about why we need archives. And I like these two quotes as a way to think about why we need to preserve this material. So from George Orwell, and the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. And of course, trans history is um, only just being written now. It's certainly been made for a long time, but the records of it and the knowledge of it is not widespread. And Confucius said, study the past if you would define the future. And of course, we want to define a better future for trans people than what much of our past has been like. Uh, so what's in the transgender archives? Uh, as uh, um, Aloisa said in our introduction, uh, the records of, of research go back to the 19th century, the late 19th century, where we consider the first um, mentions of trans people as, <clears throat> excuse me, as not quite the same as um, homosexual people, that the language used to be the same and trans people used to be considered part of that. Uh, and of course, this is in the, our records are not entirely in the Western world, but largely certainly the research records are all from the Western world. Our records of trans activism start in 1960. And again, these are people who actively presented themselves and identified themselves as trans and were active on that um, behalf of trans people. Uh, there was, of course, trans activism earlier than that. Uh, the space that we know the most about is in Germany in, uh, in the 20s and 30s, and, but the Nazis wiped out uh, pretty much all of those records and we do not have any. So our records start 1960 in North America. As mentioned, they're from 23 countries on six continents in 15 languages. Uh, you'll see before you a list 
of the countries that are represented uh, in our collections and around the edge of the slide are just a few illustrations, which I've put throughout this presentation is a few illustrations of what we have and giving you an idea of the dates of when they are from. Uh, I'll just mention the one in the, um, the person in the white suit and the top hat. Uh, that's from the 1950s. That's a Japan. That's the Takarazuka Review. That um, is an all-female um, theater Troop that uh, has been going actually since uh, about 1914. Uh, so that's just one of many items. I don't have time to talk to you about all of them. Uh, so continuing with what is in the transgender archives, uh, archivists measure the size of their archives. They say if we put everything we had on one long shelf, how long would be would that shelf be uh, in feet? It's a over 500 feet in meters, it's uh, over 160 meters. And uh, I find it's easy to picture it when I say that shelf would be a football field and a half long. Uh, so it's a fair size archives. Uh, again, uh, a list of different kinds of items that you will find in our archives. Uh, it's quite diverse, books, newsletters, and magazines, uh, fiction, uh, pamphlets, organizational records, of trans organization, personal papers of, of key people, uh, newspaper clipping files, uh, court case records, audio uh, recordings, visual materials, movies, photographs, uh, quite a bit of erotica, uh, original artworks, and ephemera being mm, odd things that you didn't expect to hang on to, such as the buttons that you'll see um, on the left of this slide. The major collections, and by major, I just mean physically largest collections, not necessarily the most important, are the Ricky Swin Institute collections, uh, the Reed Erickson and Eric Erickson Educational Foundation, and that's a picture of Reed Erickson on the bottom left, uh, University of Ulster Transgender Archive, and um, the collections of Ayanna Marikel, who is pictured on the right, an indigenous person from this part of the world. Uh, the Ricky Swin collection is one of the major collections that has hundreds of newsletter titles. That's Ricky Swin in the upper right hand corner of the of the slide. A uh, large collection of books it has documents from Fantasia Fair, which is the longest running uh, uh, gathering of trans people that we know of in this part of the world. It's been running since 19. 74, it is still running today. We have the records that go from 1974 to 2001. And in fact, when I finish uh, this presentation, I'll be joining them on Zoom for a presentation that's happening today at Fantasia Fair. Uh, another collection is from an activist by the name of Ari Kane, uh, who was very involved with Fantasia Fair, among other things. Uh, an organization called the International Foundation for Gender Education, uh, which was active for about 20 years. We have their organizational records. Um, Virginia Prince collection, uh, key activist. I will say a few more words about her in a moment. And many uh, photos, audio, and videotapes. So that was all in one big collection. This was actually the founding collection. This was the first collection we had uh, in what was not yet known as the Transgender Archives and came to be known as the Transgender Archives. And again, a few illustrations of materials um, from, from the uh, Ricky Swing collection, and it was quite a large collection. Uh, so a few words about Virginia Prince. This is an early photograph of Virginia. Uh, she is considered by many to be a, one of the founders of modern transgender activism, and she accidentally became the public face of cross-dressing in the U.S. Uh, as a result of a 1961 conviction for sending obscene materials through the US mail. The obscene materials were a personal letter that she wrote to another private individual uh, that had some sexual content in it that, and was written between two cross-dressers. That was considered illegal in the US at that time. So she was um, convicted and was um, had the possibility of being sentenced to prison. She was a, a white, middle-class, well-educated person, business person. And so she had a lot of connections and she had a lot of prestige that she could call upon and privilege that she could call upon. And her lawyers were able to keep her out of prison on the understanding that she would not break any further laws. However, she was a cross-dresser. Cross-dressing was illegal at the time and she was going to continue to cross-dress. So 
that would have put her in jail. Her lawyers negotiated the possibility of her cross-dressing in public for educational purposes. And so that started her on a career of being a public speaker uh, because it was the only way she could cross-dress in public. And she went around um, making speeches in public uh, about um, asking people to accept cross-dressing as a normal part of human variation. Uh, she also <clears throat> was an important activist because she coined the term transgenderist to describe who she was. Uh, she was not a transvestite. She was not a transsexual, the only two terms at the time, uh, because she was full-time living as a woman after the period that I just described. So a couple of years later, she started to live full-time as a woman, but she was not interested in full surgical transformation. That word evolved into transgender as we use it today, which she objected to vigorously. She said, that's not the way it's supposed to be used. We were using it, the rest of us were using it all wrong, but nonetheless, she's one of the sources of that term. And then uh, she started a um, journal, a publication called Transvestia. Some of you may have seen some of it. There's two illustrations of it in the right-hand side. Uh, and that went from 1960 to 1986. So she marks our earliest um, uh, trans activists that we have in our collection. So that's why I spent a little bit of time uh, telling you about her because she was also very influential. Uh, Reed Erickson collection is another major collection. This is Reed Erickson. He founded the Erickson Educational Foundation uh, in 1964. It ran for 20 years. It had uh, three major areas that it worked in. It supported an organization called ONE, uh, which has now evolved into the One Archives, which uh, calls itself the largest LGBTQ archives in the world. Uh, he did a huge amount in the late 60s and through all of the 70s um, in support of uh, transsexualism, bringing it to the attention of the public, to the medical profession. So he started the first international conferences that became the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. He funded pretty much all of the early researchers. He put out a widely, highly regarded and widely um, revered newsletter and uh, put out a pamphlet series, made films, TV, radio, and had a speaker's bureau. So uh, amazing story there. I'd love to tell you more about it when we have more time. And uh, then he also moved into new age movements and the fact that we believe the dolphins and, and whales talk is as a result of research that he supported when it was considered extremely fringe. He did dream research, and some of you may have heard of A Course in Miracles. It's been translated into, I think, 27 languages, and he uh, funded the first edition of that. So a very interesting person. We have 45 boxes of records from him. Uh, University of Ulster is the Third major collection I want to mention, uh, just briefly, again, a very big collection, 100 linear feet or 30 meters of, um, of many, many different things, over 120 years of books. It was collected by Richard Eakins, and um, he started collecting over 30 years ago. And this is largely UK, EU, uh, European, and some US uh, and US history. Uh, Newspaper clipping files go all the way back to the 1920s, so 100 years of newspaper clipping files. Uh, there's all sorts of fascinating correspondence and personal papers from key people. Um, many pamphlets, over 350 titles of um, newsletters and periodicals, lots of pulp fiction, photographs, and again, the ephemera. And uh, with one example there. Uh, next to the button, I'll just point out there's a letter signed by Harry Benjamin, a key figure in um, trans. Uh, history. And um, far right is a, a picture of a young Kate Bornstein. Some of you may know her name. She's uh, been a, a wonderful leader in the trans community for many years. And then the final collection I want to say a, a couple of words about is Ayanna Marikal. Uh, so it's a lovely picture of her that gives you a feeling of her personality. Uh, she's a two-spirit woman from the Six Nations uh, uh, on the Grand, of the Grand River, which is in central uh, Canada now. And she is a, a, a cultural artist, a multidisciplinary artist, also a scholar, an educator, a story crafter and storyteller. She did a lot of performance art and was active in the 1990s to 2010. Uh, she brought a... Um, indigenous perspective and, and tried to teach people to decolonize their understandings of uh, gender and sexuality. 
She was going to be a speaker at our um, Moving Trans History Forward conference in 2016 uh, and was unable to come because she was very ill with cancer and died just a few weeks later and bequeathed her entire archives to the Transgender Archives. So we're very honored and privileged to have um, her uh, material. Uh, so just to close, I wanna say that uh, certainly far from the majority, but a sizable chunk and increasing every day of our material is digitized and is available uh, through an online uh, discovery tool is what we're calling it, which is available through the website of the Transgender Archives. And as you can see, there's uh, 542 articles and 951 events have um, been cataloged that you can search for using this discovery tool. And we continue to increase. It is focused on our periodical collection. So on community-based newsletters, uh, not academic material, community-based newsletters. And then I'll mention, because this is a book fair, um, our book that we wrote about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, about the transgender archives that tells a little bit of the history of the founding of the archives, uh, shows images and tells some stories of transgender uh, history and uh, highlights some of uh, what we have in the collections. And as you can see from this slide, it's a free download and it's a nicely put together um, uh, download. It's a PDF. Uh, so I encourage you to have a look at that. Uh, please stay connected with us. We are um, active on social media and um, I've, you can find us uh, on all of these different channels. And, and then finally, I have to tell you that we are um, largely funded by donations. Uh, although we are at a university, uh, the cash flow does not come from the university, it comes from donations. So I encourage anybody who's watching and has the means to do so to please help us to um, keep things uh, preserved and, and moving forward well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, that's, that's That was a, a, an incredible presentation. What a, a very impressive collection we have there. Uh, let's go then now with uh, uh, Maria Belen. Maria, I'll just ask you that you uh, pause once in a while so the translator can come in and translate into English for us, please. Yes. It's better for my presentation to I speak in my original language and don't do it something really bad in English. Gracias. Uh, gracias a ustedes. Uh, I have a 20 minute, right? Yeah, it oh, could be a little, a little less, maybe, or of Yeah, we could 10, be. 10 and 10? Yeah, that's good, because good. then we we'll have okay. more time. For I have it. a four contract. Bueno, muchísimas gracias por la presentación. Este, y quería empezar a contar un poco de lo que es el archivo. Thank you very much for your presentation. I would like to start talking a little bit about what the archive is about. Eh, ten, primero tengo que contar cuál es la situación donde se encuentra el archivo que es en Argentina, el sur de Latinoamérica. First, I have to let you know a little bit about the current situation of the place where the archives is, are located. Donde tuvimos distintas épocas de dictadura, democracia, dictadura, democracia. It's in Argentina where we actually have been through some times of uh, dictatorship and then democracy and then dictatorship again. But in todos esos cambios, no hubo aún, siempre estuvo la persecución muy marcada hacia la comunidad trans. Nonetheless, through all these changes, there's always been a persecution, perse persecution against the community. Con edictos o estadísticas policiales o edictos fiscales que hacían de las detenciones de las personas trans. And we have data that shows uh, proof of all of this. Esta, 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 esta situación dentro del país hacía de que las personas trans eran constantemente penalizadas por el hecho de su vestimenta y su género. The situation uh, caused that trans people were always punished and uh, penalized for the way they dressed. Esto fue pasando distinto dependiendo la época, si era en los 40 o los 50, si eran 30, 60 y 90 días en la cárcel. Depending on the time, it was 30 to 60 uh, days uh, in jail uh, through the 60s. Around, 
yeah, it's 30, 60, or 90 days, depending to the time. Eh, inclusive después en los 70 y los 80 empezó a bajar ese tiempo de, 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 de estar en la cárcel. The time in jail for, pe for people who were dressing uh, transgender, uh, as a transgender changed uh, during the 70s to the 80s uh, to a little bit less. Y tenemos que estar pensando que la democracia final, la última que estamos viviendo en Argentina, llega en el 83. And we have to note that democracy as we know it uh, started in the, in the late 80s in Argentina. En este, yeah, en, en este contexto es donde empezamos a, a, a poder documentar, en, donde, de, perdón, en este contexto del país es que empezamos a documentar nuestro propio archivo. It is through this context that we can actually start building the archives. Eh, el disparador fue una caja que heredo de Claudia Pia Baudraco. The trigger was uh, the box that I inherited from uh, Claudia Pia Baudraco. Yeah, in 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 2012. In 2012. Que coincide en la Argentina con el cambio de la ley de identidad de género. Coinciding in uh, Argentina with the with the Uh, transgender identity law. Yeah. Y que eso marca la democracia de las personas trans, ya que a partir de ese momento nos dieron una documentación con nuestro nombre. This is a breaking point for transgender people as we received an identity card with our names. Por eso para las personas trans decimos que la democracia en Argentina llega a partir del 2012 cuando el Estado nos reconoce como personas votantes y ciudadanas. This is why in Argentina we say that democracy started actually in 2012 when the state actually recognized us as people who could vote. En esta nueva democracia de Argentina de las personas trans que solamente tiene nueve, nueve años. In this uh, new democracy of Argentina of uh, transgender people. Es donde nosotras empezamos a documentar esta historia que fue la que pasada y mal contada inclusivamente. Es when we start recording this history which has been uh, not well told. Vero, puedes compartir imágenes, por favor. Vero can uh, show different pictures. Um, nuestro nuestro archivo podría haber quedado como existe en Estados Unidos la la caja de casa Susana. Our archive could have uh, remained as the one that is, exists in the U.S. as Casa Susana. Pero el, el disparador fue la caja de Claudia Piava Doraco con alrededor de 6.000 imágenes dentro. But the actual trigger was a box that were from belonging to Claudia Piava Doraco with over 6.000 images. En el momento que ella muere, yo heredo esa caja. Uh, when she died, I inherited this box. <coughs> Y con esta, eh, con esta caja es el disparador para que otras compañeras empiecen a hacer lo mismo y empezar a traer esas fotografías que estaban ocultas en sus casas. And this box actually triggered something bigger since a lot of other uh, people started sharing their pictures and bringing over their memories. Los primeros años fue sabernos vivas. The first years it was just about recognizing who was alive. Había una desidia y un abandono que hacía que muchas estábamos fuera del país. There was a, a, a disencouragement knowing that everyone was outside the country, not inside. Con muy poca comunicación entre nosotras, por eso es que digo el sabernos vivas, saber quién estaba vivo y quién no, y dónde se encontraba cada persona en el mundo o dentro de la Argentina. There was not a real communication between us. So this is why I say that uh, during this time we recognized who was alive. We didn't know who was alive or who was in Argentina, who was outside, who was actually living or, or not. Fue pasando el tiempo y en este contexto fue que conozco a Cecilia Spalles, que fue nombrada al inicio. Through this time I, I met Cecilia, who was named at the beginning of this chat. Eh, fotógrafa, activista que había conocido otros archivos y me convence de que este archivo tenía que salir a la luz y no solamente dentro de nuestro ambiente privado. Uh, she, she's a photographer and an activist who convinced me that this archives should see the light not only uh, within our group but widely uh, open for the public. El cometido inicial de cuando creo el archivo era poder compartir las fotografías dentro de nuestro ambiente familiar. 
the objective of this project was originally just to share the pictures within our family environment. Y como había dicho antes, sabernos vivas, quién estaba vivo y quién no, a modo de censo entre nosotros mismos. And also as a sort of census just to know who was alive. A partir de ahí se empezó a hacer la profesionalización del archivo. As of this point we started uh, professionalizing the archives. En el momento que ganamos el primer premio de Iber Memoria de México. Uh, at the point we uh, won the Iber uh, Award in Mexico. Yes, es, 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 es la unión de los archivos y cultura de los países que se centra en México. Todos los países de Latinoamérica participan. This is an award where all the countries in America participate. It's a union of archives and culture of uh, different countries. Y a partir que ganamos ese, ese premio, pudimos capacitarnos en, en el arte del archivismo. As of this point, when we won this award, we started professionalizing, professionalizing our knowledge about how to make archives. Seguimos participando en distintas capacitaciones y diplomaturas para poder capacitarnos, seguir capacitándonos. We took different courses to professionalize. Pues sobre todo que estamos hablando de personas trans mayores de 50 años que no han tenido la posibilidad de estudiar. This is especially uh, meaningful because we're talking about transgender people who are over 50 years old, so we needed to professionalize ourselves in the field. Y Y estamos, aparte de que ellas son las que nos proveen de las historias y las fotografías. These people are the ones that provide us with the pictures and the history. Le estamos dando los últimos años de dignidad para que ellas puedan tener ese sueño de tener un trabajo que nunca pudieron tener esa oportunidad. And we're also giving these people uh, the opportunity to have a dignified job. Y, y una profesión, ¿no? Eh, Estar hablando de nuestras fotografías, estar hablando de un ranking de, de la analogía desde el 2000 hacia 1936, que es la foto más antigua que hemos recolectado. Was, our oldest picture is from 1936, and uh, our latest picture is uh, up to the 2000s. Eso lo marcamos por la analogía, el cambio de la fotografía de papel a la era digital. And this is shown in the archives, uh, by with, with the difference in the paper, in the type of paper we're using for each picture. Eh, todavía como archivos no estamos empe empezando a enfrentar cómo vamos a estar de este como archivo tenemos que afrontar este nuevo reto que es la parte virtual y que hay un hay va a haber un a futuro una forma distinta de archivar los últimos 20 años la era digital. As, a, as, a, as an archive that's paper-based, basically, we are challenged right now by the change in technology, which is making us think about the future 20 years in which it will probably be a digital archive. Dentro de nuestros proyectos, eh, Argentina tiene 24 estados. Argentina has uh, 24 states. En, dentro de nuestros proyectos es continuar ampliándonos y abriendo distintas oficinas en otros estados para continuar haciendo ese mecanismo de recolección. And we want to increase our presence in the country uh, throughout all these different, like 24 states. Seguimos haciendo capacitaciones a personas trans para poder este Eh, poder recolectar y proteger los, los, los materiales que tienen en sus propios domicilios. We're still creating courses and certi certifications for these people who are over 50 years old, as I mentioned before, who want to uh, share their images and their, their memories, basically. Inclusive las personas que no quieren compartir el material, les enseñamos cómo conservarlo en Even sus domicilios. For even those people that don't want to share with us their material, we're, we're teaching them how to preserve their photographs and their material, even if nosotras, they don't want to share it. Tenemos que estar pensando que nosotras estamos negociando con sus recuerdos y sus eh, sentimientos en el momento que le estamos pidiendo sus fotografías. We have to understand that it's, uh, we are basically making a deal with these people regarding their uh, thoughts, their memories, and their feelings. Eh, por eso es prácticamente este archivo es un archivo familiar. 
this is why this archive is basically a family book, sort of. Eh, y esa es la esencia que tiene eh, el archivo y cuál es la diferencia quizás con otros archivos, ya que cada una de estas fotografías eh, podemos identificar quiénes son las personas que están dentro. And that's the essence and distinction of this archive is, is basically it's like a family album and uh, we can identify all the people that's in this archive. That's the difference. Ok, con otros archivos. <coughs> bueno, este, creo que estoy en mi tiempo. Muchísimas gracias. I believe I'm out of time, so thank you very much. Y si pueden seguirnos, también tenemos nuestras redes, que es Archivo Trans en Instagram. If you want to follow us, we have an Instagram account uh, at Archivo Trans. Hey there. Ya. Yeah. Ok. No, está de chaco nada más. Ok, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you so much, Maria, for, for this beautiful presentation. What a, an incredible work. It uh, goes beyond what uh, uh, an archive is really and going into such a strong community uh, service. I'm going to, I'm unable to start my video for some reason. I cannot really do that, but maybe I'll keep talking. Uh, I don't know if my video has started or <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. Uh, Katayun, maybe. Okay, cool. Okay, again, it's, it's working now. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe, maybe a, a, a little, a, maybe now we can just talk very briefly about the, the, the process of, while we are all like already in this conversation, the process of turning the, the archivo into a book. If you want to briefly uh, 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 give, give us a summary of that process, uh, Veronica, please. Yes, of course. Um, well, it was something that is very uh, special for me is that all the pictures in the book were, uh, were taken by them. So it's not that they're pictures of photographers. So it's uh, really the, the authorship is really from them, all of, all of it. For me, this, this, was, this is very, very important. And then uh, what we try to do is a book that, uh, that is very intimate, uh, transportable, like you can actually hold in your hands. Um, the binding, maybe I can uh, talk about more technical stuff as it's a, a photo book uh, fair. The binding is the binding that is especially made so uh, we are able to open it properly and so the pictures don't cut. And then uh, as it's a family album and it has a lot of uh, horizontal pictures, we decided to uh, that is something maybe not very common in books and um, photo books is to to put the horizontal pictures uh, in a way that you have to turn the book uh, because otherwise we we should have to put it, put them in a smaller size and the pictures are all amazing uh, and it was a, a long process i think it took us like two years or less uh, but it was uh, amazing amazing experience uh, then there's a detail about the glitter I don't know if Belen, you can explain it. <laughs> There's a glitter uh, in the back part and in the front part. Belen, uh, could you, do you mind? Yeah, I, I hear. I... Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, parte de la purpurina or the glitter. El, el, oh, sorry. The, sí. the archive. Yeah, perfect. The, the book Part... has glitter. Yeah, the book have a different part of the glitter, but why we have the glitter there? Eh, en dentro de nuestro argot, o idioma, porque en realidad no era un idioma, que se llamaba Carrilche. Uh, we have a sort of a language or dialect to be uh, called as such. Uh, like in the United States, speak Latin, for so example, in 1980. Uh, we have it in Argentina, one language to call Carrilche. 
with that carrilche, I have a one mix between Portuguese and Spanish, and we use different uh, word to the police or the other person don't understand us what we speak. Part to that is when one person die, we say in Portuguese, Vixa no more vira purpurina. That can understand, try to say the, it's not correct the translation, but I try to do the, the, the faggot or what is it? Okay, the, the, the person, when one trans person die, uh, don't real die, is, uh, ¿cómo se diría? Se convierte en purpurina. Las personas well, trans, te lo digo en español, las personas trans no morimos, nos convertimos en purpurina. Trans people don't die, they just convert themselves into glitter. That is the translation, perfect, yeah. That is the translation when we say, vision no more, vira purpurina. That is why we put the glitter in the book. And then, and then in the inside part of the book, if you can show it, Belen, there's the nicknames. I don't know if the translation is correct uh, of all the, the family, the community. The, the names there are in, in one way uh, hugging, hugging the, the book, like it's a big hug. Can you just say something, Belen, so your image becomes big? Belén, eh, si dices algo, tu imagen se hace más grande y pueden ver la foto en toda su pantalla. Perfecto. A ver. There, they. If you hear me, can I think to is perfect for see, right? That is the part to. And there is the nickname name. And this, that is the situation to like to big arm to do with the hook. Have it also the bends. You can look everything. It's a strong, beautiful, like us. Beautiful, beautiful. It's a, it, it's a really beautiful project uh, and uh, an amazing archive. Maybe I'll, I'll start with like some questions for, for, for uh, the three of you. Um, uh, how, how has been uh, like the, the reception of this work? I mean, like the archives does uh, so much work in the community, the Archivo does so much work in the community already in education and uh, professionalization uh, of uh, uh, trans people. Uh, uh, but uh, and the, the uh, archive and the University of Victoria probably has like a ton of visitors and people interacting with the collection. So I would like for each of you to talk a little bit about the reception of your work and uh, and and the result of showing, especially especially the thing that you said uh, at the beginning, uh, Maria, when you said that it was a private archive, like a family album and a, and a census, so it's like a, a, a way of knowing who was alive and who was dead. Was there a, an apprehension of opening and making this archive public? Uh, and, and then what was the reception then uh, when you opened the archive to the general population? Lo primero que puedo decir es una gran sorpresa para los grupos artísticos, para los grupos de memoria, para los grupos que hacían historias sobre la comunidad gay y lésbica. Uh, I would like to begin to say that it was a very surprising for all the community, these people that would uh, create uh, histories and stories and art regarding the gay and trans uh, community and their, their history. Tenemos que estar pensando que tanto la comunidad gay y lésbica siempre fue mucho más fuerte y mucho más visible que la comunidad trans en cuanto a lo tecnológico, en cuanto al estudio y en cuanto a llegar a una universidad. We need to understand that the gay and lesbian community has, has always been more open y accepted than the trans community. They have, uh, gone to universities, they've studied first and uh, transgender people did and had access to all these rights. Había una historia muy mal contada en la cual siempre se hablaba de la homosexualidad en Argentina y los libros hablaban mal sobre la comunidad trans tratando de llevar siempre como personas gays. 
uh, there was a very bad story be, uh, be, being told around Argentina about homosexuality, uh, basically saying that uh, transgender people were part of this uh, gay community, which was not the case. Por eso fue que cuando, cuando nos hicimos conocidas en un espacio de memoria, eh, Argentina tiene, como dije antes, sobre la dictadura, tiene un espacio de recordación sobre la memoria. Uh, this is why it was so important for us when we were publicly uh, known uh, through these archives uh, that, as I've told you, uh, Argentina has this uh, sort of the new democracy going on. Este espacio es llamado Ex Exma, era un centro de tortura. This, uh, this space is actually named Exma, it used to be a uh, torture place. Y pudimos tener una exposición ahí dentro que se llamó Esta se fue, a esta la mataron, esta murió. Uh, so we were able to have exactly in this place uh, an exhibition that was called This one's gone, this one's dead, this one was killed here. Eh, una exposición, la primera, pública, y ahí donde fue que todos los grupos supieron de nuestra existencia y nos pudieron respetar como, como, como artistas, como fotógrafas y como archivistas. This was our first public exhibition and we managed to gain a lot of respect from the public as artists, as archivists and as storytellers. Y a partir de, y sobre todo en el extranjero. Mainly abroad. Este, y a partir de ahí tuvimos un derrotero de distintas exposiciones en lugares muy reconocidos. After this, we managed to get a lot, a lot of uh, expositions, so to be allowed to have different expositions in many other places that were very well known. Como el de, de Londres, el Virreina de Madrid, o el... Uh, la, la reina, perdón, el virreina de, de Barcelona y reina Sofía de Madrid o Colombia, Brasil, distintos países donde hemos tenido exposiciones o presentaciones. Uh, some countries where we had had the exhibitions uh, were London, for example, in the Villa Reina in Barcelona, Reina Sofía in Madrid, Colombia, Brasil, just to name a few. The TED in, in London to the TED was one of the important for the exhibition. Eh, este, este, esto, este reconocimiento del exterior hizo mucho más abierta la posibilidad de ser reconocidas realmente en Argentina. This uh, recognition from uh, all this international community really helped us out to be recognized in our home in Argentina. En Argentina hay un dicho que dice memoria, verdad y justicia cuando hay un acto de discriminación o de crimen. En Argentina hay un saying que habla sobre recognición, memoria y verdad y justicia, que necesitamos esta memoria para reconocer uh, la verdad y obtener justicia. Y nosotros en el archivo decimos que desde el archivo estamos en la primera etapa en reconstruir la memoria. And in our archi archive, we, we say that we're in this first stage into re rebuilding this, this memory. En el momento que la estamos haciendo escuchar y, y, y nos creen, estamos convirtiéndola en verdad. As of the moment that we are actually being heard and believe is that we are making it real. Y con eso tenemos la esperanza de poder llegar a tener en algún momento la justicia. And this is the way that we hope and pray that one day we might be able to get justice. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Devore. The, the, there is something that you would like to do about the reception of the collection and the interaction uh, with, uh, with the, the public and the use that the collection is, is having right now. Thank you. I'd be, be happy to. And uh, thank you, uh, Maria Belen, for all that you're doing there. Uh, I would like to correct perhaps a um, misunderstanding that I created when I spoke earlier that's relevant to this question. So uh, the transgender archives are actually integrated into the University of Victoria collections and are cared for by the University of Victoria libraries. Uh, the chair in transgender studies is who is uh, more independent and we do um, pretty much all of the public uh, promotion and, and, um, and uh, 
public speaking about the transgender archives, uh, do all of the um, solicitation of materials and deal with uh, donors and uh, a number of other outward looking activities. And uh, so I say this, and I want to emphasize this to, to say that um, the creation of the transgender archives was actually quite painless. Uh, the uh, donation, the first collection was the Ricky Swin donation. And um, that happened because I just asked Ricky if uh, she had a home for her collection. And she agreed after quite a bit of discussion that it could come to the University of Victoria. And the university, when I came to them and said, I've requested this collection to come here, I hope it's okay, uh, said it was okay. And so that's indicative of what the entire history of the transgender archives has been like in terms of its um, uh, reception at the university. The university has been very warm and very welcoming. In terms of its uh, reception and use in the wider world, you can see around behind me a number of posters on the wall. I don't suppose you can see what they say, but these are just a small selection of the people who have come to the archives. Generally, they do a lecture when they're here. And so we have a tremendous number of visitors who come from all, all around the world uh, to make use of uh, the, the uh, materials in the transgender archives. Uh, many of them are researchers, but certainly uh, are academic researchers. Many of them are, are students and some of them are faculty, but many of them are community members who are working largely um, uh, on reclaiming their own history or are um, working on artistic projects and are looking for inspiration and content. They may be writing a book and want to have some historical context to it or an artist who's looking for individuals to, um, to use as, as imagery. Uh, so very good usage in that regard, very good usage of the online materials. Uh, people are hungry to know trans history. And uh, there's a couple of books written, but very few books written. And this is the raw material that um, tells our stories and tells our, our history. Uh, so I would say that our, our path uh, has been pretty smooth in terms of being accepted as an institution and has been quite um, robust in terms of how many people come to use the materials either in person or online. And part of what flows from that is a lot of educational outreach because the people who are coming here to make use of the materials almost always do some kind of public talk. And um, prior to COVID, uh, those talks were all in person. Since COVID has changed everything, uh, those talks are generally online. But even when they were in only in person, we always uh, videotape them. And we have a very um, extensive uh, YouTube collection, and I encourage anybody who would like to know more about some of the research that's being done into transgender history uh, and is informed by transgender history to look at our YouTube channel. We've got about 130 or so YouTubes that, and many of them are uh, not everything. Some of them are also arts events and so on uh, that are posted by the chair in transgender studies. And so that's another way in which the content of the archives gets out into the public is through these uh, YouTubes of people talking about the, the work that they've come here to use the archives to, to aid them in their work. Thank you. Uh, uh, Belen, I suppose that you, 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 the Archivo also has an online presence, uh, uh, right? I, I've been looking and you, you do have a, a website uh, for the Archivo, correct? Belento archivo, archivo, archivo arch uh, yeah, we have it when with page is archivo trans dot ar. Es, estaba, estoy entendiendo bien. Sí, También Belén, está sí. digitalizado. Sí, yes, we have it. Yes, we have it. The one, perdón. Sí, tenemos una web page que es archivo trans punto ar. Yes, we have a uh, website archivo trans dot ar. <laughs> AR donde tenemos nuestro catálogo, este, donde tenemos un 60% de las imágenes subidas a ese catálogo virtual. Where we actually have our catalog and uh, actually 60% of the images are uploaded there. Eh, tenemos, no sé si se puede compartir una página web. 
we also have a website. I don't know if we can actually share this. Yeah, yeah. I think Lisa is putting in the in the, to the public. Uh, uh, Archivo. And, and, and also, you can show for uh, we can show in this moment with one looking. Okay. If that is possible, because having one nice presentation to the page. Eh, fue trabajada también con los mismos formatos que hicimos desde el libro. It, it is made, the website is made uh, using the same uh, format that we use for a book, for a printed book. Eh, con distintos guiños a la población, con purpurina, con colores, la edad. Uh, os, eh, este es un collage que es, cada persona puede estar jugando con las fotos y armar su propio screen y hacer una captura. This is a collage, for example, where uh, there are different images that you can uh, move, move with the mouse. Yes, like that. And you create your own collage. Eh, después tenemos ahí como bien arriba tenemos el acerca que habla sobre nosotros. We have the about section where we talk about who we are and what we do. En las provincias y los lugares que estamos. Después tenemos el catálogo como está al lado. We have our catalog that's next to it. Que lo tenemos dividido por fondos. Que es el, one, cada, yeah. This one is divided in different sections. Y, y al tocar cada una de las fotos, van a poder encontrar fotos simples o compuestas. And when you click on each picture, you can find a, a pictures of just one image or multiple images. Eh, está tanto como hombres y mujeres trans, si bien el 80% son mujeres trans. We have a... Uh, multiple uh, transgender women or men, but most of them are women. Y bueno, y hablamos de fondos como archivos, pero a la vez con las compañeras hablamos de colecciones. Si bien como archivo no es correcto, pero con las compañeras hablamos de colecciones y dentro del archivo de fondos. We talk about uh, collections within the archives, even though there are different things, uh, we talk about both of them, both of those, yeah. Si bien tratamos de hablar nuestros lenguajes dentro de un archivo correcto, tratamos de tener un lenguaje mucho más simple con las compañeras. Uh, even though we, we have a more complex language within the archives, we try to have a, to keep a more simple uh, language with our, with our partners. No solamente pueden buscar por, de, por el nombre del acervo, sino también por su, nuestras eh, subcategorías que tenemos arriba, como es infancia, activismo, exilio, que es parte de lo que están viendo en este momento. Uh, you can, uh, we have an index that will help you look for images, uh, for different uh, images within the file. So these ones are split for, from childhood into uh, activism or adulthood, and we have different sections. Different categories, eh, tenemos diferentes categorías para poder estar haciendo nuestras subdivisiones. Y dentro de esas categorías tenemos otra subdivisión de categorías que ya lo pensamos más de la parte artística. So it is, it is divided into multiple categories. Uh, we have a general ones and then we have uh, more specific ones uh, from the artistic, uh, artistic perspective. No dentro de lo que es el, lo, la catalogación de como archivo, sino ya pensando qué hacemos con el archivo y cómo lo difundimos. Uh, thinking more on... Uh, how we can share this archive and make it accessible. Si tocas en videos, if you touch videos there, ustedes pueden ver algunos de los materiales que generamos. Para poder entender el archivo. If you click on videos, you can see some of the videos that we've created. Para poder entender el archivo, nosotros primero recolectamos el material. To understand the archive, uh, we first collect the material. Lo limpiamos, lo escaneamos. We clean it, edit, and uh, uh, scan it. Tenemos tres opciones. Entra como donación, entra como concesión, o entra prestado. Uh, we have uh, three different ways of uploading these files. They can be either a donation, a, conception, uh, a concession, or it can be borrowed material. De todas las formas, siempre el material eh, regresa acondicionado o lo tenemos nosotras en, nuestra, en nuestro lugar con, con las condiciones adecuadas de, de, de conservación. Either way, the material goes back to the people either in better state or it is kept in our archives in the best and correct. Y ahí, y ahí es donde entra la otra etapa que tenemos del archivo, es que en el material, una vez curado, 
y una vez catalogado y dentro del archivo, generamos material para poder ser visible, que es lo que estamos hablando de los videos. And we have a third stage that it, this is once the material has been classified and well arranged and classified, then we can upload it. And this is this is all the material that we create for the public. En, en definitiva, generamos material para que el archivo vaya a la gente y no que la gente tenga que venir al archivo. We, we create a material so that it is accessible to the people, so that the archive can go to the people and not the people going to the archives. Esa es la esencia, que es un paso más que tenemos como archivo. That's the essence, that's uh, one step forward that we're taking there. Ok, ok. Wow, well, yeah. A beautiful, incredible work. Um, thank you. We are actually reaching the, the, the end of our, our time here. It just, it just hits the, the one hour spot. Uh, so we don't, don't have a, a, any more time. Uh, to talk, even though I, I could I could continue talking <laughs> for a long time. It passed everything passed so fast, and I think there's so much uh, yet to, to be talked about uh, about the the, the work uh, uh, that you both do with uh, uh, um, uh, archiving uh, the histories of uh, uh, trans people and in very different uh, ways, and yet uh, getting results that are. Uh, as important as uh, and 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 really, as you said, uh, bringing uh, memory and truth uh, as as a precursor to justice, uh, Belen. So thank you so much, uh, Maria Belen Correa, uh, Dr. Aaron Dever, and uh, Veronica Fieras, who were here with us. Thank you also, Anna Lester, for for the translation and uh, the team of the book fair for organizing this a little bit lo logistically complicated a talk <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah i hope i hope you can make connections there maria belen and dr <laughs> devore and um, and uh, yeah, yeah it was it, it was a, an incredible uh, uh, inspirational and uh, educational uh, panel uh, and uh, I'll, I'll just in invite the audience to keep checking the rest of the programming. We have more talks and more projects today and throughout the weekend and, and the book fair. And th thanks for coming and, and thanks for watching. Uh, okay, goodbye. Thank you. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Gracias.